Hi all, welcome to this video tutorial on embedded systems. In this video, we'll be looking on networks for embedded systems. This is lecture one for networks for embedded systems. Throughout this video, we'll cover introduction to networks for embedded systems, I square C bus, and some of the previous year questions in connection with I square C bus. Requirements for embedded systems differ quietly from those of general purpose networks. Some networks are used in safety critical applications such as automotive control, while others are used in consumer electronic systems which are made to be inexpensive. Other networks which are used in industrial control networks are to be extremely rugged and reliable. For embedded computing, several interconnect networks have been developed. The I square C bus is used in microcontroller based systems. The controller area network was developed for automotive electronics. It provides megabit rates and can handle large number of devices. And the other one is Ethernet and variations of standard Ethernet, which are used for a variety of control applications. We'll be looking on in detail on each of these networks. In this video, we'll be discussing I square C bus. I square C bus is also known as inter integrated circuit. It is commonly used to link microcontroller into systems. It is used as command interface in MPEG2 video chip. What is MPEG2? MPEG2 receives raw video and audio and outputs compressed stream. I square C is designed to be low cost, easy to implement and of moderate speed. That is about 100 KB per second for standard bus and up to 400 KB per second for the extended bus. Moving on to the structure, it uses only two lines, serial data line, SDL and serial clock line SCL. Serial data line is for data and serial clock line indicates when valid data is present in SDL. Every node in the network is connected to both SDL and SCL. Some nodes act as masters while some others act as slaves. This is the basic electrical interface to the bus. Since the bus does not define particular voltages, whether it should be low or high, it can either use bipolar or MOS circuits. Both bus signals use open collector, open drain circuits. That is, it allows several devices to simultaneously ride the bus without causing electrical damage. Open collector, open drain circuitry allows a slave device to stretch a clock signal during a read from the slave. That is, in simple words, it is the duty of the master in generating the SCL clock signals. But there are certain situations where an I square C slave is not able to cooperate with the clock speed given by the master and is need to slow down a little. This is done by a mechanism referred to as clock stretching. Hence, open drain, open collector circuitry allows a slave device to stretch a clock signal during a read from the slave. Initially, the default state of the signals of SDL as well as SCL will be high. This is done by two pull-up resistors connected to both SDL as well as SCL. A master drives both SCL and SDL. When two devices try to drive SCL and SDL simultaneously, it is open circuitry that prevents this issue. However, each master must listen to the bus while transmitting to avoid collision. Each bus master listens to the bus while transmitting to ensure that it is not interfering with others. It can understand in a such a manner if the device receives different value from that it is trying to transmit, then it can understand that it is interfering with some other device so that it can take necessary steps to prevent it. Every device connected to the bus has its own address. 
This is determined by the system engineer. Addresses should be chosen such that no two devices in the system have the same address. A device address is usually 7 bits in the standard I2C definition. If all the 7 bits are 0, then it is used for general call or bus broadcast. The other one is reserved for the extended 10-bit addressing scheme. Apart from these two addresses, there are several other addresses too. A bus transaction is a series of one-byte transmissions. That is, if a master wants to write to a slave, it transmits the slave's address followed by the data. That is, first it transmits the address, then it transmits the data. So the address will be 8 bits as well as each data will be sections of 8 bits. For reading operation, since a slave cannot initiate a transfer, the master must send a read request with the slave address and then the slave will transmit the data. Therefore, a bit after the 7-bit address is reserved to indicate whether it is a read operation or a write operation. 0 indicates writing from master to slave. 1 indicates a reading from slave to master. This is the address format of a device. The first 7 bits indicates the device address and the 8th bit indicates whether it is a read operation or write operation. Whenever a transaction has to occur, a start signal have to be initialized by leaving the SCL high and sending a 1 to 0 transition on SDF. Similarly, stop signal is quite different is initialized by setting the SCL high. SCL remains high always, both for start signal as well as stop signal. And in stop signal, there is a 0 to 1 transition on SDA. Always start and stop signals are paired. This is the state diagram indicating basic state transition for the master's actions in best transaction. Initially, the bus is in idle state. For a transmission to occur, a start signal is initiated, followed by address of the device. And if it is a right operation, the bit following address will be zero. Then data right operation takes place. After completing that operation, a stop signal is initialized, which makes the device back to idle state. If the operation is a read operation, then the bit after the 7-bit address will be data 1 indicating read operation and then data read operation takes place and then it moves back to idle state after giving a stop signal. After each operation, the device reaches to the idle state. The next operation can be initialized by again giving a start signal followed by address and whatever the operation will be. This picture depicts three instances that is the formats of bus transaction. The first one indicates a master writing data to a particular address which is initialized by a start signal followed by 7-bit address and a zero indicating it is a write operation and datas which have to be written by the master to the slave. This operation is terminated by a stop signal. The second one indicates a read operation. Since the slave cannot initiate a transfer, master should send a read request. The read request from the master is sent by giving a stat signal followed by 7-bit address and indicating that it is a read operation. Then here, the data from the slave is given and this operation is also terminated by a stop signal. The third one is combination of both read and write operation, which is initialized by a start signal and also terminated by a stop signal. This is the timing diagram. Initially, SCL and SDL will be high. The start signal is initialized by keeping SCL high and there is a transaction transition from 1 to 0 in SDL. 
At each bit, the clock line goes high. The SDL checks its bit, whether it is 1 or 0. Acknowledgement is sent after every 8-bit transmission, no matter whether the 8-bit is an address or data. For acknowledgement, the receiver sets the SDL to 0 if it has properly received the data. After acknowledgement, the SDL has a transition from 0 to 1, that is, it moves to a high state, whereas SCL remains in the high state itself. The bus uses this feature to arbitrate on each message. When sending, each device listens to the bus. Arbitration is usually completed in address space itself, but at some instances, it may extend to data phase also. That is, if a device is trying to send a logic 1 but hears a logic 0, it immediately stops transmitting and gives the other sender priority. If two devices are trying to send identical data to the same address, they will not interfere and transmission succeeds successfully. For a microcontroller to connect to a bus, I2C interface is implemented. This is an I2C interface of a microcontroller. I2C device takes case of generating the clock data in the data. Application code calls routine to send an address, a byte data and so on, which also generates SCL, SDL, acknowledgements, etc. This is all about I2C bus. We have two more embedded system networks, Ethernet and field bus, which we will be discussing in the next lecture. Here is a question from the university question paper. Describe I2C bus structure and its transaction process. This is a question from October 2019 KPU question paper. The answer to this question is simple and straight. We have already discussed. We will have two figures. The first one is the basic I2C bus structure where we have two lines, serial data line and serial control line. Serial data line contains data and serial control line indicates when a valid data is present in SDL. All the nodes are connected to both SDL and SCL. Some of the node acts as masters while others act as slave. In the next figure, we will have SDL and SCL. Initially, the state of both these lines will be high. This is done with the help of pull-up resistors connected to both SDL and SCL. We have data interface and clock interface. Data interface is connected to SDL for data operations and clock interface is connected to SCL for clock operations. Here is what we have learned. We have learned about I2C bus, the bus structure, the electrical interface, address format, state diagram, etc. Thank you all. Thank you for listening to this lecture.